Hello everyone, today we're discussing the introduction to synthesizing aspirin. It's going to be the first hands-on exper uh, experiment in CHEM 1280 you're going to be working on. And um, first thing I would like to mention is the description of the initial procedure is in the lab manual and it begins on page 35. So hopefully um, before you uh, watching this video, um, you were able to uh, read through the background information and procedure description. So I will basically fill you in into some um, theoretical background that um, some were discussed in um, the lab manual, but I'll expand on some things and we'll talk about um, organic chemistry because uh, aspirin or acetyl salicylic acid is an organic molecule. So this experiment is designed to introduce you to uh, basic organic synthesis experiment. So when you take organic later on in your career, you will be somewhat familiar with what organic uh, compounds are like and uh, what it is like to make a new organic uh, molecule. And then uh, we're also going to discuss probably in the um, second video of this series, we're going to discuss uh, purification of aspirin by recrystallization, which is not covered in your lab manual, but instead is, will co is covered in the handout that is available on Canvas, which you are expected to print and have with you for class. And we'll also discuss uh, purification of aspirin later on as well. So um, aspirin or acetyl salicylic acid is a unique substance in that it was the very first um, pain relieving and fever reducing medicine that um, humans were able to make, which uh, has proven to be extremely safe in most people. And um, it was actually breakthrough in science because before, um, its discovery and use, there, were, there was no um, fair, uh, proven safe pain reliever and fever reducer. So if you think about it, we take things like ibuprofen and acetaminophen and aspirin for granted, and there were days when such things were not available. And one thing that people didn't know about was a substance called salicylic acid, whose structure is shown right here. It's also, um, this chemical equation that I have on the screen is also shown on page 36 in your lab manual. So salicylic acid, which is used here as a precursor or starting material for um, synthesizing aspirin, was a substance derived from bark of certain trees and it was known to people to have fever reducing and um, pain relieving properties. And the problem with use of salicylic acid internally was that it was causing severe stomach bleeding and ulcers and could cause death. And so it was not safe at all. And uh, the chemists, when they look at, looked at structure of salicylic acid, decided to find out why it was causing such uh, terrible side effects. And um, the cause of severe side effects was primarily linked to this portion of the molecule right here. And we'll talk about what it is in a second and what it's called in organic compounds. And so uh, what chemists then decided to do, it was actually chemists uh, working for Bayer Corporation in Germany in uh, early 1900s, I believe it was. So they decided to see if they could modify this exact portion of the molecule and um, possibly create something of a safer, a safer alternative to salicylic acid. And so what they did is exactly what you're going to do in lab. They took salicylic acid, which is a white solid, and they treated it with a substance called acetic anhydride. It's a derivative of acetic acid that you may remember from CHEM 1240, which is a main component in vinegar. So acetic anhydride was reacted with salicylic acid. It's a reaction that requires heating and it requires a catalyst. The catalyst in this reaction is a strong acid which generates hydronium ion or hydrogen ion up here. And the resulting compound whose structure shown right here is called acetyl salicylic acid. And um, the structure is shown here. And then the second product is acetic acid itself. So obviously uh, there will be a lot of vinegar-like smell associated with this lab. 
because both the silicon hydride and the acidic acid have it. But uh, when they test uh, this substance over here, uh, it basically proved uh, triumph of science, of science because it um, has proven to be a very effective pain reliever and fever reducer, and it has proven to be fairly safe uh, for most uh, people. Now, it does still um, have some side effects, uh, and so whenever it's prescribed, doctors always warn that it may cause uh, some stomach issues with, uh, in some people. Uh, another fascinating fact, of course, about aspirin is uh, even uh, after all these years it's been used in medicine, uh, it has been discovered later that it also is very effective in preventing strokes and uh, heart attacks because it uh, allows uh, thinning of the blood. And so a lot of times you'll hear people who may be prone to those are recommended to take what's called baby aspirin, 81 milligram tablet a day in order to prevent uh, heart uh, attacks and strokes. And recently I saw some reports that aspirin is being looked at as a possible drug to help with cancer because it um, appears to slow down some inflammation processes in the body. So truly interesting chemical. So let's go back to salicylic acid and take a little bit of a closer look at its structure. What you will see here, it has basically uh, three important uh, functional groups. I would point out here that organic compounds often are considered um, on a basis of their uh, structure and specific groupings of atoms that provide uh, them with certain chemical properties. So what kind of functional groups do we see here? Well, first there is the six-membered ring with three double bonds inside. You may recognize this um, if uh, you've seen it before maybe as a benzene ring. So it's basically six carbons in the ring and uh, off of each carbon here, 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 and up there is a hydrogen which is not shown. And so uh, this here is called the benzene ring. I'm going to bring it up so you can so this here uh, is also represented like this, it's referred to as benzene ring. The other functional group that's present in um, so the silicic acid is this grouping right here, right up there, I can barely reach even with my fancy pointer slash pipette. So what you have here is a carbon, doubly bonded to oxygen, and then an OH group off of it. This entire group, C double bond OOH, is referred to in organic chemistry as carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acids are one of the strongest acids among all organic compounds. And then uh, finally this group here, oxygen with the hydrogen. Now, from your experience in um, Gen Chem 1, if I asked you what OH was, you most likely would have said hydroxide. Here, uh, I'd like to point out this is not hydroxide. Hydroxide is an ion and hydroxide only exists when you have OH group attached uh, by ionic bond to a, a metal of an, uh, um, I'm sorry, to a metallic ion such as sodium or potassium or barium or calcium. Here you have covalent bonding of the oxygen to a carbon, right here, this carbon is a part of the benzene ring. And so here you have an OH group referred to in organic chemistry as alcohol. We did talk about alcohols briefly. You may recall when we discussed molecular modeling. So OH group attached to a carbon in general is referred to it, uh, as an alcohol. But in salicylic acid, we're dealing with something of a special type of an alcohol. So here you have an OH group, obviously an alcohol attached to a carbon, but this carbon up here is like I already mentioned, a part of the benzene ring. This type of alcohols, a special subgroup referred to as phenol. So whenever you have an OH group attached to a carbon, which is a part of the benzene ring, you're speaking of phenol. The reason why this is important here is because phenols are very strong acids. Alcohols are considered very weak acids. Phenols are much stronger acids. And the reason for that, you will find out when you take organic chemistry. There's a, a very good uh, logical reason for it. But for now, what you need to know is that salicylic acid contains phenol. And uh, 
as you may recall, I just mentioned that this is the group that um, all the side, negative side effects were linked to, and so uh, this is precisely because of acidic properties. Uh, it was found that phenols attack stomach lining and cause bleeding and ulcers. I might also mention here that salicylic acid still is being used to this day, only, although not internally, but you may be familiar with it because um, majority of acne medications on the market uh, contain various percentages of salicylic acid. Uh, and it's because salicylic acid is very effective at um, helping with skin inflammation. And so here, um, I labeled this oxygen with an asterisk and this red wavy line represents the bond breaking. And I'm showing you uh, also bond breaking and acidic anhydride. The structure is shown here. So the bond between this carbon and this oxygen here breaks. And then I'm, sh I'm showing with this red arrow how this entire portion of uh, acetic anhydride, CH3, C double bond O, gets attached right here to this oxygen. So we would trace our way to the product, which is aspirin or acetyl salicylic acid. We see that benzene is still there. Carboxylic acid up there is still uh, there. And this is the oxygen uh, that used to have hydrogen attached. This is the oxygen labeled with an asterisk, but instead of the hydrogen now, we have a carbon with double bonded oxygen and then CH3. So we replaced phenol with this new group. It's not like anything we've looked at before. It's an oxygen uh, C double bond O and then another carbon. This arrangement here, this group right here, this entire group right here, including this oxygen and this carbon, is referred to as an ester. So what we are able to do in this um, reaction is we are able to convert phenol group into an ester group. And um, therefore this reaction as a whole is defined as this esterification reaction. And uh, you need to know the definition of a certification reaction for the first lab quiz in a couple of weeks. And so I'm giving you this definition here, and I believe it's also provided in the lab manual for you. By the way, this uh, lab manual for Chem 1280, most terms that have definitions with them are in bold to make it easier for you to find them. So a certification reaction is a reaction between an alcohol and either an anhydride, like in our case, or carboxylic acid, leading to formation of an ester. So here we reacted an alcohol, or in our case it was actually phenol, and um, anhydride, in our case it was acidic anhydride, and we uh, created an ester, and that ester is called acetyl salicylic acid. It's still called an acid, by the way, people often ask me why is it called an acid if it's an ester? Yes, but it also still has carboxylic acid up there, so technically it's still an acid. So uh, having said that, I would like to uh, walk you through some of uh, important things in the procedure, and uh, I will be referring to uh, the procedure in the lab manual. I'd like to point out that um, on your data sheet, for this experiment on page 45, you will only be, be filling out part one, which says synthesizing aspirin. And then uh, we will expand the procedure to include recrystallization, like I mentioned, and uh, recrystallization and testing will be discussed and uh, data will be entered into a data sheet provided along with a handout that's on Canvas. So uh, procedure involves weighing out uh, about 2.1 gram of salicylic acid. You're gonna place uh, this white solid into Erlenmeyer flask. You're going to then uh, go to the hood and you're gonna measure, uh, I believe, four milliliters of liquid acetic anhydride. Acetic anhydride is a liquid. I'd like to warn you that acetic anhydride should only be measured and handled in the hood because it's a strong lacrimator, meaning it causes tear formation and it irritates throat and nasal passages. So once you've um, 
measured out about four milliliters of acetic hydride, you're gonna add it to salicylic acid. And then the next step before uh, you begin heating is to add the acid. The catalyst uh, here is a strong acid, namely concentrated sulfuric acid. Of course, concentrated sulfuric acid presents its own safety concerns because it's an extremely strong acid and a strong oxidizer. So uh, you will be wearing gloves from now on. In the COVID era, you're gonna wear gloves for every lab. And in this case, uh, gloves would be required anyway, even if um, we didn't have um, this global pandemic because of um, concentrated sulfuric acid. But the thing I wanted to point out is that before sulfuric acid is added, you're gonna have to make sure you swirl um, the anhydride and salicylic acid together to sort of um, ensure that anhydride liquid covers the solid. It won't, the solid will not dissolve until after you start heating, but it's important to pre uh, prevent sulfuric acid heating your uh, salicylic acid directly because uh, it may cause oxidation, which is an unwanted process. And you will know if oxidation of salicylic acid has occurred because it will start turning um, brown or black. So in order to prevent that, uh, you will need to first cover solid with acetic anhydride, uh, which is a liquid. And then you're going to place your flask with your two reactants and the catalyst in the water bath. Um, obviously, it's desirable to begin um, with the experiment by setting up the water bath. We will be using the hot plate, or uh, you can also use a bar, uh, Bunsen burner. I, I think Bunsen burner is probably better because it's fast and heating. So uh, you have a heating apparatus shown on uh, figure two on page 38, uh, they are showing um, the hot plate. And if you use a burner instead, you will need a ring stand, a ring holder, and a wire screen to, make, uh, to hold the beaker. And then um, one other quick remark on the water bath. Remember not to fill your beaker too much with water to avoid any water spilling when you lower the flask into it. And then uh, you're required to heat for about 15 minutes or so, 15 to 20. While heating, uh, we will recommend that you loosely cover the mouth of the flask with a piece of parafilm to prevent water vapor from entering the reaction mixture and uh, destroying your aspirin. Once heating is complete, you will carefully take the flask out and then TAs will direct you to some other additional procedure changes that will be necessary in order to make sure to crystallize and filter the aspirin for future use. So this completes uh, part one of this discussion. In the second video, we will discuss recrystallization and testing of aspirin.